What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to another example, we have to show that the function x to the power of two over three is not differentiable at an x value of zero. And this is a unique function. We haven't really covered it yet, but I'll show you how the graph looks like first. x to the power of two over three basically looks like this. It's kind of a weird looking function. That's how it looks. And what we have to show for this function at this x value of zero here, that it's not differentiable. And whenever you see something like this, remember in the last video we covered a corner where it was kind of like lines meeting at a corner. And notice this is sort of like curves meeting at a corner. And this isn't called a corner, this is called a cusp. So this is going to be a case of where a function is not differentiable at its cusp. So to show f of x um, equals x to the power of 2 over 3 is not differentiable at an x value of 0, what do we have to show? We have to basically show that this limit doesn't exist like we did in the previous video. Okay, and so taking these parameters, plugging it in here, we're going to be showing that the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 all over h doesn't exist because the a value that we're looking at, the specific a value is 0. And then this is the function here. So if we plug in 0 plus h for this x value, we'll have um, 0 plus h to the power of 2 over 3 minus f of 0. Notice if we plug in 0 for this x value, we'll get a y value of 0. This is going to be all over h. So notice that this function is continuous at that x value of 0. It has a y value of 0. Right? This point here exists on this function. So this function is continuous, another case where you can have a continuous function, but we're going to show that it's not differentiable, that the derivative doesn't exist at that point. And so here, what we can do is if we simplify this, notice 0 plus h, that's just 0. And so what we'll end up having is h to the power of 2 over 3 minus 0, we don't have to write that, all over h. Now notice this h here in the denominator, that's like 1. And so notice that we are dividing two exponents that have the same base. And so what we can do is subtract those exponents. So h to the power 2 over 3 over h to the power 1, that's like h to the power 2 over 3 minus 1, which is like h to the power 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3 if we convert that 1 to a fraction with a common denominator. And so we would end up getting h to the power negative 1 over 3. 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3 is h to the power negative 1 over 3. And if we want to rewrite that, that would be like 1 over h to the power of 1 over 3, like that, if we bring that uh, negative exponent down to the denominator. So we can rewrite this as the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h to the power of 1 over 3. All right, we took this, simplified it to that. Now the question is, what is this going to equal? Notice we can't do a direct substitution because if we sub in 0 for h, this, uh, this denominator is going to be 0. 0 to the power of 1 over 3 is just 0. You can't take 1 and divide it by 0. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote here. The way this function looks like, 1 over h to the power of 1 over 3, it's actually very similar to how 1 over h would look like. Just that uh, parent rational function. It looks like that. And so notice as we approach 0, the limit isn't going to exist. 
because notice that the limit as h approaches 0 from the negative side of 1 over h to the power 1 over 3, if we approach it from the negative side, notice that that is going towards negative infinity. And the limit as h approaches 0 from the positive side of this function, 1 over h to the power 1 over 3, those y values are going towards positive infinity. Now you don't necessarily have to know how this graph looks like. What you can do is you can figure out these two limits here, these one-sided limits, by making a table of values. So we can approach that 0 from the negative side. So we could pick numbers that are really close to 0, so like negative 0. 0.0001, for example. If you take this and plug it in for this h value, what you're going to get is a large negative y value. And then we could approach it from the positive side. We could plug in positive 0. 0.0001 or even more zeros, right? Just approaching that h value of 0 from the positive side. If you take this, plug it in here, you'll get a large um, positive y value, right? But this is how that function is looking. And so because it's approaching these two different values here, this limit does not exist. And so we showed that this derivative doesn't exist. Because remember, this limit here was basically the definition of the derivative simplified for this function at that x value of 0. Now, I kind of want to talk about the intuition of why we have negative infinity here and why we have positive infinity. Remember that when we first introduced the difference quotient, what is this? This is the slope of the tangent of f of x at an x value of a. And the way we came up with this was we were looking at this point here and we would basically take points and get closer and closer and just approach that point. So we would have two points where we could find that slope of the tangent. And so notice that if h is negative, right, if we're approaching 0 from the negative side, what that means is that we are finding the slope of the tangent with this point that we're looking at and a point that's to the left, that's really, really close to this point, but to the left of it. So to kind of like maybe zoom, zoom in a little bit more, here and here, notice that as we get closer and closer, that slope of the tangent is becoming more and more negative, right? It's becoming more steep towards the negative side. And that's why that limit is approaching negative infinity, right? So we can uh, say that the derivative of this function at that x value 0, as we approach 0 from the negative side, it's approaching negative infinity. That's where that negative infinity is coming from. That's why we're getting negative infinity there. And then as h approaches 0 from the positive side, we're finding the slope of the tangent with this point with another point that's really close but to the positive side. And notice as we get closer and closer to that point, for over here, the slope is like that, but as we get closer and closer, that slope is going to become more and more positive. It's going to become more and more steep towards the positive side. And that's why it's approaching positive infinity. So that's why that negative and positive infinity come about. So I thought I would mention that uh, just graphically why we're getting these results. Now we're also going to be dealing with a case. Let me uh, let me kind of summarize this. So before I actually talk about that next case, what I want to mention here, summarize, is that the derivative um, was approaching 
negative infinity as we approach that a value, that zero value from the negative side. And then the derivative was approaching positive infinity when we're approaching that a value, this zero here from the positive side. And whenever you get this kind of pattern here happening, that's basically when you get a cusp, right? When you're approaching negative infinity from one side, when the derivative is approaching negative infinity from one side, and then positive infinity from the other side. And these can be flipped as well. So we can have the derivative approaching positive infinity as we approach that a value from the negative side, and we could have that derivative approaching negative infinity as we approach that a value from the positive side. Right, so these can be flipped. An example of that is if we had a function where it was just flipped, where it looked like this. Right, notice that as we approach that zero from the negative side, the slope would be positive infinity. And then as we approach it from the positive side, that slope would be negative infinity. So either or of these cases is going to lead to a cusp. And what we're actually going to cover in the next video is if both sides are approaching either positive infinity or negative infinity. What's going to happen there? And actually what's going to happen is we're going to have a vertical tangent then. So if they're approaching the same signs of infinity from both sides, so if it's approaching positive infinity and positive infinity or negative infinity and negative infinity, we're going to run into that case. And we're going to cover that in the next video. With a cusp, the signs are different from both sides.